Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare and sometimes self-care. So if that's your vibe, please consider hitting subscribe. And today I want to share with you the four strategies to conquer dehydrated skin. I have dehydrated skin. I'm very prone to transepidermal water loss. And I know that it can be kind of a confusing condition because sometimes you're like, I'm so dry and tight, but like it's underneath this like sludge of oil on my face. Or sometimes, you know, it feels like you have really, really dry skin and you're putting all this moisturizer on and yet you still feel underneath your skin is not replenished. Just the condition alone is is very confusing. So if you figured out that you have dehydrated skin, like it's already an accomplishment. But today I want to share with you the four strategies that are really going to help you conquer your dehydration, really help to solve some of the symptoms that you might be feeling and just get it out of your life so that you can focus on other things and the dehydration is not the center of your focus all the time. So if you guys are so ready to find out my four strategies for conquering dehydrated skin, give the video a big thumbs up and let's jump right into it. Strategy number one is to rehydrate your skin. Yeah, you probably guessed this one. It's pretty fundamental though, because at its core, dehydration means your skin is lacking water, right? And that water is really important for keeping your skin comfortable, hydrated, and plump. And the reason why your skin feels like it's tight and itchy is because it's lacking water. Dehydration uh, occurs when your skin loses water. It's called transepidermal water loss. And that's when your skin isn't holding on to hydration, but it's actually um, escaping through your moisture barrier um, and it's it's leaving your skin. And that's why you feel so parched. So the very first thing you need to do is replenish the hydration that your skin has lost. And the way that you do it is by focusing in on humectant ingredients in skincare products. So humectants are ingredients that replenish your skin with water and help your skin hold on to that water. Some common humectants that you can find in skin care include glycerin, panthenol, sodium hyaluronic, beta-glucan, and betaine. And these ingredients are great to seek in really any skincare product. They're going to be able to help provide your skin with hydration. But really, my strategy for really rehydrating my skin, replenishing it when it's really lacking water, when it's very dehydrated, is a toner or an essence. Especially if you're getting these products from the Korean skincare side of things, toners are very gentle, very hydrating products that are packed full of humectant ingredients. Really focus on rehydrating your skin and plumping it up with lots of hydration. So toners really are one of my favorite category of products. I've got lots of recommendations here on my channel. I'm not going to go through all of them right now. I will put right here my top five favorite toners video. Great place to start if you're looking for some recommendations, but I'm going to name just a few here. The Make Preem Relief Me Essence Toner the Soon Jung Centella Relief Toner and the Cosrx Sika Toner. All of these are beautiful for helping with dehydration. And all of these have a very specific quality um, that I think is really important to seek out with um, toners for dehydrated skin. And it's really hard for me to describe this, but it's so crucial when your skin is dehydrated. And that's where the hydration in the toners goes deeper into your skin because you know the sensation with with your dehydration it's like it's so deep inside of your skin where your skin just feels so parched and so thirsty deep within your skin and sometimes you're putting on hydrating skincare and it just doesn't feel like it's diving deep enough like it's not getting to the source of that dehydrated like feeling that you're you're experiencing these toners do when you apply these onto your skin they're very watery they're very thin but they just dive in deeper and they really, they, they give the quality of replenishment to the skin. And that is so important. It's really hard for me to describe this, but once you experience it, when you have dehydrated skin, when you experience that, it's total relief. You're just like, oh, finally, like something got in there, something got down to the source of that dehydrated feeling in my skin. Now, these are like really awesome um, products that really get in there, but don't ever be afraid to layer your toner up. This is actually a really crucial uh, step that I found in my journey with dehydrated skin, because just one layer of toner usually isn't enough. When your skin is very dehydrated, when it needs that feeling of replenishment, do not be afraid to put on one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven layers of toner. Yes, I said seven. There is such a thing in K-Beauty called seven skin method. And that literally means layering up a watery toner up to seven times. And I'm not saying that that's the magic number and that you should put your toner on seven times every single day. But what I am saying is feel free to experiment with what feels right for your skin. And this is about practicing skin tuition and listening to what your skin is telling you. And this is so important when you're dehydrated. So layer your toner up, put on one, maybe two, wait, really check in with yourself. Just listen to that little voice inside. Like, does my skin feel replenished or could I, could I use a little bit more? Put on another layer. This is really what's going to rehydrate your skin, replenish your skin and get that water that you're lacking back into your skin. So don't be afraid to layer this up multiple times. Strategy number two is barrier care. Oh yeah. <laughs> now I do say this a lot, but I will say when I realized this for myself, it was a light bulb moment in my skincare journey. And what I realized was dehydration is a symptom of a weak moisture barrier. So it is very important for you to treat the dehydration with lots of water. That's really the first step, but that's not where you should end in treating your dehydration. And if that's all you're doing for your dehydrated skin, you're probably in a constant loop of feeling dry and tight and you put on watery skincare and it feels okay, but then it gets dry and tight again. And that's because you're not getting down to the true cause of the dehydration, which is your moisture barrier. So remember we we're talking about transepidermal water loss and how your skin is not holding onto the water. It's kind of evaporating. Um, uh, it's passing through your skin and kind of evaporating off of it. And that's why you feel so dry and tight. Well, what, where it's actually escaping through is your moisture barrier. So your moisture barrier is kind of like a brick wall and it's like skin cells and there's lipids that are like the mortar that hold those skin cells or like those bricks together. But if your moisture barrier becomes weak or damaged for whatever reason, it's actually like there's little gaps and holes in it. So that's what's actually allowing the water to escape. When there's little holes in your moisture barrier or weakness in your moisture barrier, the water just goes right through those vulnerabilities in your moisture barrier. So that's why dehydration is a symptom. So if you're feeling dehydration, that is a clue that you need to take care of your skin's moisture barrier. And it really is varying degrees of severity when it comes to your dehydration and how weak or damaged your moisture barrier is. Meaning if your skin is a little bit dehydrated, um, like it's, 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 okay, it's bothersome, but it's like, it's okay, then your moisture barrier is probably just weak. If your dehydration is so bad that like you can't get in between your morning and nighttime skincare routine, like in the middle of the afternoon, your skin feels so dry and tight and dehydrated and probably itchy and irritated. And like, all you can think about is going home and washing your face, like immediately in the middle of the day. If you're in that situation, speaking from personal experience, <laughs> if you're in that situation, your moisture barrier is probably damaged. So the worse your dehydration is, is probably the worse off your moisture barrier is. But the good news is here that you can 100% heal that moisture barrier. You can 100% strengthen it up. And that is really the secret sauce. That's really the key to getting the dehydration under control. You know what I'm about to say next. My favorite way to do this is with the ingredients there, my cholesterol fatty acids. These are really one of the better ways to do it because these three lipids are actually naturally produced by your body and they are found in high concentrations in the moisture barrier. Remember I said like the bricks are like your skin cells and the mortar is like lipids. Well, the 50% of those lipids are ceramides. 25% of them is cholesterol and the other 25% of them are fatty acids. So when you apply these actually topically through skincare, they're very effective for getting in there and kind of gluing up the holes and plugging them up. So that's kind of how this, how those ingredients work for your moisture barrier, and they can be incredibly effective through skincare. So I do have a lot of recommendations for ceramide, cholesterol, and fatty acid-based skincare. I'm going to link um, some of those videos um, in the description box. I'll probably put one right up here for you too. Um, I don't want to make these videos too long, but I do have lots of recommendations. Just quickly though, of course, Stradia Liquid Gold is a great place to start. I do also like the RN 
NW Ceramide Plus Serum. Really good if you're like more combination to dry skin type because there's a little bit of, of moisture to this. Not a lot, but a little bit. And the Ample N Ceramide Shot is a little bit lighter with all three of the ingredients in here. Very moisture barrier supportive, but a little bit on the lighter side and maybe a little bit more appropriate if you're feeling a bit more on the oily side. Now, I also want to quickly mention that um, facial oils can be very beneficial. It, you know, everybody's skin is different. Your mileage may, may vary, but my skin has actually really benefited from using facial oils that concentrate on good amounts of omega fatty acids um, in their oils. So I really like Stradia Fortify. It's an omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acid blend. That seems to really help with the strength of my moisture barrier. But um, on the little bit more affordable side, the Ordinary Chia Seed Oil also has a great omega uh, profile that gets lots of fatty acids into your skin and really helps to strengthen the moisture barrier. Strategy number three is to use occlusive ingredients. This is really important because like I said, dehydration is a symptom of a weak moisture barrier. When your moisture barrier is weak, it is not holding the hydration into your skin. It's allowing it to escape that natural barrier function is not functioning, but we can use occlusive agents to create a temporary barrier on the skin that can really help to keep the hydration inside of your skin as we are healing and mending the, the uh, skin barrier. So occlusive agents are very important and cannot be forgotten in the whole strategy of conquering dehydrated skin. So at the end of your skincare routine, it's really important to have some type of occlusivity um, in your skincare routine. Usually like in a moisturizer or maybe even in a sleeping pack, but you do want to seek out the occlusive ingredients towards the end of your skincare routine because we spent all that time and energy rehydrating the skin. So what's the point of doing all of that work if you're not going to seal it in with an occlusive moisturizer or a final skincare product? You're just going to let all that hydration, all that work and energy just escape through your skin again? No way. Some common occlusive ingredients that you can find in skincare include petrolatum, dimethicone, lanolin, carnauba, and beeswax, and some oils. <laughs> Not all oils are considered occlusive. You know, contrary to what you may hear on the internet, they are not all actually creating an occlusive quality on the skin, but some oils do. And one of the big ones that you're going to find often in skincare that is going to give you that occlusive um, property is going to be mineral oil. So here are some um, recommendations for you. And these are all with like different um, weights. These are what really work for my skin. Um, but there are lots of different uh, moisturizers with occlusive ingredients out there. So a few that I like include CeraVe Moisturizing Cream. This uses petrolatum and it also has dimethicone. Illy Yoon Ceramide Ado Concentrate Cream. Love this one. Um, this is great because it does have dimethicone in it, plus some ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. Um, something else that I like from the drugstore is Cetaphil Moisturizing Cream. This has quite a few occlusive agents in it, including petrolatum and dimethicone and some oils that can kind of help with the lock it down quality. And I like the La Roche-Posay Lipicar Balm. This has dimethicone. It has microcrystalline wax. Usually when you see waxes um, in skincare, it's going to have an occlusive uh, property to it. And this also has mineral oil, definitely an occlusive oil. And um, this has a really nice lock it down, very moisturizing feel on the skin. The fourth strategy is not not skincare, but it's really important that you do not skip this strategy. And that is to know why your skin is dehydrated in the first place. This is crucial to getting your dehydration under control and really conquering it because you can rehydrate your skin, get in all that moisture barrier care and get in all those occlusive ingredients. You can do that all day long, day in, day out, day in, day out. But if you don't really identify the cause of your dehydration and the cause of why your barrier is a little bit weak or even damaged, it's possible that you're just gonna keep going through the cycle of dehydration. And that's why I said you can't skip this step. 
this is actually the most important of it all is really understanding your skin and knowing really what the trigger is for your dehydration and your weak moisture barrier because there's actually a ton of different reasons why this could be happening so it's really important for you to explore this and really find out what resonates and what feels true for your skin so ask yourself is this seasonal does your dehydration occur around seasonal shifts maybe it's winter into spring or summer into fall do you feel like you're only getting dehydrated certain times of the year because weather shifts seasonal shifts can kind of disrupt the body just a little bit you know how sometimes your sleep cycle gets a little bit off when the season season is changing well your moisture barrier can get a little bit off from seasonal changes too there's a lot of different reasons why that might be but if you can pinpoint like I always get dehydrated in spring that can really help you build an effective skincare routine around that time that can really help you to go okay spring is coming I'm gonna ramp it up with the humectants I'm gonna make sure I have a really good occlusive moisturizer on hand and I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna add in a little bit more ceramide um, focused skincare into my routine around the springtime because that's gonna help me weather <laughs> do you see what I did there it's gonna help me ride out the dehydration so that it doesn't affect my life it's not that bad I have it under control you also need to ask yourself is this skin care related because you may have recently added in a new skincare product or maybe you have a certain routine of using AHA or retinol or tretinoin or vitamin C you know maybe you've added something new in or maybe you've ramped up your routines with those types of products if you're finding that like the day after using something like that, you're starting to feel dry and tight. You may be starting to make the connection back to maybe it was the retinol that I use. Maybe it's the vitamin C that I've been adding into my skincare routine. So only you can really draw, you know, the connections there, but really think about, have you changed anything in your routine? Have you ramped up maybe chemical exfoliation in your skincare routine? Have you just started something like a retinol or a tretinoin? These are all common um, skincare, like, categories that could actually aggravate dehydration that could aggravate your moisture barrier just a little bit now you know how he's talking about like the degrees of dehydration and the worse your dehydration is probably the more damaged your moisture barrier is one of the most common culprits it's not always this but it very often is this the most common culprit of a damaged moisture barrier is too much chemical exfoliation and we've all kind of done it right <laughs> we all kind of learn from our own own mistakes and we all learn our skin's tolerance levels by kind of pushing its boundaries a little bit sometimes we push it too far so it's really important to honestly ask yourself have you been going in a little bit too like a little bit too much with the AHA, the BHA, the retinols, the tretinoin. Ask yourself honestly if that could be the case. If you do feel like your dehydration is really bad and you do suspect that your moisture barrier is damaged, I would just suggest like pulling way back on those those um, those types of skincare products or just cutting them out cold turkey altogether until your skin feels healed. That's the only way you're gonna get your moisture barrier back on track. And then you can start up again with them with the knowledge of what is too much for your skin and just don't cross that line again. Really assess your environment because this is a common culprit for dehydration that a lot of us just don't really consider. The environment around you can actually affect your skin and it can affect how fast you're losing water through your skin. So if you're in a very dry environment, like if you just live like in an arid climate, you probably are already a little bit more prone to dryness and dehydration, but you can also um, encounter dryness in your environment from aggressive air conditioning or even heating can really dry out your environment, can dry out your home, your office, wherever you are, and that can start to aggravate your moisture barrier and start to increase transepidermal water loss. So you wanna kind of assess your environment and see, hmm, is this maybe a reason why? I've definitely worked in some offices that have made my skin feel so dehydrated because the AC is just so aggressive. So, you know, knowing that that was the cause, I could kind of adjust my routine to add in a little bit more hydration and a very occlusive moisturizer to help me get 
through. Now, if you're feeling like your skin is really dry and tight, like when you wake up in the morning, it's possible that like your bedroom environment is very dry. And that's where you might want to incorporate something like a humidifier to add just a little bit of moisture, a little bit of humidity into the air um, that is going to really benefit your skin. When the air isn't so dry, you're not going to lose as much hydration through your skin. And you really want to ask yourself, is this just you? Is this just your skin? Because some of us are just prone to dehydration. There's a lot of factors for why that might be, but some of us actually just don't produce as much lipids in our body, and our barrier is always a little bit on the deficient or weak side because of it. As you get older, too, your body does uh, get less efficient at producing its own lipids, and that's the ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acids. So that could be one of the reasons why as you get older, you might find that your skin's just a little bit more dry, maybe a little bit more dehydrated. So there's definitely reasons why you might naturally have a barrier that's just a little bit more prone to losing water. It's not your fault. It's nothing you've done. It's just who you are. It's just how it is. If that feels true to you, and I'll be honest with you, it feels true for me. If that's you, then what you need to do is just supplement your skincare routine on a regular basis with those lipids. Adding in a great um, facial oil with the omega fatty acids in it is a great place to start. Of course, using products with ceramides, cholesterol, and fatty acid on a regular basis can help keep your moisture barrier strong. So it's not like the end of the world if you feel like maybe your moisture barrier is all always just a little bit deficient and it's not because of you know going hard with chemical exfoliation your environment is humid enough right you know it's happening year round it's not just a seasonal thing it's not really coming with lots of irritation and inflammation it's just dehydrated it could just be you and that's okay what's so great about skincare is it's really effective um, so you don't need to worry just make sure that you have moisture barrier care at the top of your mind with all of your skincare routines once I mastered these four strategies I really got my dehydration under control. Once I understood where my skin was coming from and what was triggering the dehydration, I was really able to get on top of it to the point where dehydration does not run my life anymore. And honestly, for the longest time, it really did run my life. All I could think about was how dehydrated my skin was. All I could think about was how I wanted to rehydrate it, do a skincare routine, not anymore. Now it's just kind of on the back burner and I'm able to take care of it really easily. So if you have any tips for treating dehydrated skin, let us know in the comment box below. We're all here to help each other out. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider hitting subscribe. If you haven't already, I release a lot of new skincare content throughout the week. So consider turning on notifications too, so you're never out of the loop. I hope you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.